Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are studying from the book of Matthew. We just concluded our study about the blessedness of gentleness from Matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 5. And today we will just start our study from Matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 6 longing for righteousness blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied but before uh, we go into that text i would like to give some uh, context uh, where in biblical uh, interpretation and in our life as a whole uh, context is everything and the surrounding principles that we take to understand scripture are essential in understanding an individual text. It's very important if we study a particular text, if we can study it uh, uh, in the context of the whole biblical understanding of that particular topic, it is going to be uh, an encouragement for us and it's going to help us uh, very much. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 the biblical teaching is that men are dead in sin and that is a very essential uh, fundamental thing to understand Bible teaches us that men are dead in sin it's a very important starting point as you consider uh, the whole meaning of salvation biblical salvation saved saved from what saved for whom we need to understand that when we say that i was about to get into an accident and i was saved it's a particular type of salvation or particular way that we have saved and if you are in a sports match uh, that particular person by his batting or by his bowling saved a match with that goal they saved a match that uh, saving a goal they saved a match so uh, this term saved we use in day-to-day -day, uh, life but when we talk about uh, the salvation in Bible it talks about being saved from sin and saved away from sin to God and for his glory and this whole doctrine of salvation start from the premises that men are dead in trespasses and sin you must start from the context of where you came from where it all began and spiritually speaking in the course of your life it began with you being spiritually dead in your sin look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 we read like this you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air and of the spirit that which is now working in the sons of disobedience among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath even as the rest the starting point in your spiritual life was for you being spiritually dead that you were animated by unspiritual desires lust of this world the manner of this world and you had no life of God within you you were alive physically but spiritually you were dead physically you were alive and you could respond to the uh, the uh, the things of this world you could see you could touch you could hear and you were thinking in terms of this world alone but with God you could not have an intimate loving relationship with God and you had no life of God within you and there was no spark of divinity whatsoever in your soul 
पीपल थिंक दैट देर इज गुड इन एवरीबडी ओनली थिंग इज दट बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सटर्नल प्रशर और द वे यू आर ब्रॉट अप यू आर बीन नो बाइबल टॉक्स अबाउट मैन बींग डेड इन सीन means the evil is already there in us the selfishness and self centeredness and sin centeredness is already there in every child who is born into this world david told in sin i was born in sin i was born when i was conceived i was conceived in sin so sin is there in the every fiber of our being every cell of our being why we say that we need not teach a child how to uh, throw tantrum in in the house we need not teach a child how to be disobedient we need not teach a child how to be selfish we we need not teach a child to be envious and angry and cry they do it by default but if you need to put in something good something uh, disciplined we need to train and teach and punish and uh, slowly inculcate or cultivate those good habits but all the bad habits selfishness self centeredness uh, anger uh, doing things when nobody is there all those things are inborn you were dead the lights were out it was dark and you were under the dominion of the devil and in that condition you were doomed to suffer the wrath of god and that is the condition of all of you who do not know christ this morning even this morning if you do not have christ in your life you are dead in your in your sin and trespasses and there is no spiritual life in you and you are desperately in a in a difficult position a spiritual position which is going to end in eternal damnation because it is appointed unto man once to die and then to face judgment the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus so if you have christ you can have eternal life if you have christ you can have forgiveness of sin if you have christ you can have remission of your sin if you have christ you can have his righteousness credited into your account and you stand before god in the imputed righteousness and justification of christ so what is this, the 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 nature of human being according to ephesians chapter 2 the first few verses bible says that you are dead in sin dead in sin dead means you cannot respond to god to any stimulus that is your spiritual situation then you are in darkness you are in darkness means you don't know where you are going after your death if you ask a person today if you die whether you will go to heaven or hell they are not sure they are living in ambiguity they do not have certainty in their life and if you are a person who do not know where you are going to spend your eternity after death you need to read the bible because bible can help you to have that certainty in your life whether i am going to go to heaven or hell or whether heaven and hell is a reality or whether it is a concocted story whether it is a reality or whether it's a fallacy i urge you to open a bible and read for yourself and then you will understand the reality of heaven and hell and the 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 the, the dreadful nature of hell how can i avoid that place who can help me from getting into that place who can help me to take me away from that place i will tell you christ can help you you are dead in sin you are in darkness and you do not know where you are heading to in exodus chapter 10 exodus chapter 10 verse 21 we read like this then the lord said to moses stretch out your hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of egypt darkness which may even be felt 
so in the in those days moses as he was uh, uh, assigned by god and his word to deliver god's people from the slavery of egypt to take them to become a nation who will worship the true god according to the word of god he sent darkness as a judgment darkness which could be felt darkness which could be touched and isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light jesus christ told he is the light of the world and he can give that light to you so that you will know the reality facts about life and life to come death and after death experience if you want light about those things i urge you to come to the word of the light the truth of god's word the bible jesus christ who claimed i am the light of the world he is not going to give light to a some sect of people or some religious people he can give light to anybody who come to him and i urge you whoever you may be you take god's word and open it and read for yourself and you will see the light which it shed into your life you will see the light and certainty with the certainty and with the clarity you will be able to see and go through this life and the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death upon them a light has shined about the lord jesus christ and about his incarnation bible says that the light came into this world so you if you are living in darkness it's very dangerous you will not know where you are going and you will head into danger and then dead in sin in darkness disobedience due to self centeredness and selfishness and self will it is very important before a person come to know the lord jesus christ as a personal savior and lord no matter who you are whether you are ill educated or well educated whether you are rich or poor whether you are man or a woman whether you are old or young you are disobedient due to your self centeredness and selfishness and your self will exercise uh, ev- over everything else so disobedience is there at the root then you are dominated by the devil i am trying to expose certain things from ephesians chapter 2 you are dead in sin you are in darkness you are disobedient to uh, uh, people around you your parents it is so easy to be disobedient rather than be obedient it is so easy to or uh, disobey your teachers rather than obey your teachers why it is so easy to disobey because there is a principle of death there is a principle of sin there is a principle of transgression in your heart that is because you are dominated by the devil dominated by the devil and doomed to destruction doomed to destruction and death is the destiny death is the destiny the wages of sin is death and left on yourself you are a lost sinner i have understood that reality and i have accepted it before god and in that situation i understand that i am without hope of heaven and the only way that i can be reconciled to god is through faith and trust in christ who died on behalf of me on behalf of you and this whole meaning of redemption the whole meaning of salvation whole meaning of adopted into god's family it's all there christ came into this world in order to save sinners just like you he came into this world to save sinners just like you to do what you could not do for yourself and that christ is offered his own blood as a sacrifice which could reconcile you to god you are reconciled to god you come to god only through the merit and shed blood of christ there is nothing in you could have saved yourself so that's how dead you were and thou that's how desperate your situation were and scripture says that god made christ who knew no sin to be sin on behalf of you christ was made sin for you 
he made god made christ who knew no sin to be sin on behalf on your behalf that we might become the righteousness of god in him god receives sinful men just like you simple women just like you not by looking at your deeds not by looking at your good works not by looking at your charity that's and he will never say that's good enough for me because it's all tainted by sin it is or mangled with sin all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags before god's absolute perfect holiness and god receives sinners only by declaring them righteous when they put their faith and trust in the lord jesus christ and what he has done on the cross of calvary if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that he has raised from dead you will be saved you will be saved from your sin and you approach god on the merit of someone else that is christ and that is essential for you to understand and it is not by works that you have done or that any of us come to christ look at ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith so if you need to be saved from your sin if you have to be saved from your dead state if you want to be saved from darkness if you want to be saved from disobedience to obedience if you want to be saved from that possession of dominated by the devil if you want to be saved from the doomed destruction which is going to fall upon you if you want to be saved from the death which is your destiny you need to trust christ ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it is a gift of god not as a result of works so that no one may boast in front of god for it is by grace that you can be saved it is through faith that can be, you can be saved and not of yourself not by your good works no good work is good enough to please god to be used as a ticket to enter heaven that is very clearly mentioned in the bible bible offer you a salvation as a gift as a mercy gift as a free gift as a gift of grace gracious god merciful god a magnanimous god out of his love for the sinful being he took upon himself the punishment and the responsibility of sin and he allowed his son lord jesus christ to die on the cross of calvary and that death is a sacrificial death it is a substitutionary death it is your death that he died it is your curse that he bore it is your sins that put him on the cross and when you accept that god save you and you do not have anything to boast before god it's not even that you had that initial impulse that took you to christ but it is because god graciously did a work in your heart to awaken you to your lost condition to bring you to the point where you would cry out to christ for salvation have you ever done that i have not done that for many years but at one point of time in 1993 i understood that i am a lost sinner i understood that god is holy when i stand before god in his absolute perfection and holiness he is going to judge me it is appointed unto jason once to die and to face judgment and when i face judgment the sins what i have committed the sins what i have thought the attitudes which i have cherished in my life the secret sins the the uh, uh, youthful lust which i have pursued the selfishness and self-centeredness of my life the way i ought to love god i did not love i didn't i was not grateful to god i walk on his earth i breathe his air i drink his water i i experience all the goodness from this god and i do not acknowledge him as god and thank him and that sin is going to weigh me down and when i understood that i also realized that god is offering me a way out god is offering me a salvation 
to have all my sins covered and I confessed Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord I confessed that sin is sin what is confession confession means you say the same thing you confess something means you say the same thing what the Word of God say about your sin you say the same thing about Christ what the Word of God says so when God of God says that he is God in human form I accept and confess that when God says that his son is the light of the world I accept and confess that when he say that I am the way the truth and life and no one comes to the father but through me I accept that and confess that when he says that I am the resurrection life he who believes in me even if he die he will live and I accept that and confess that and when you do that God saves your soul you get the assurance of salvation the burden of sin is lifted away from you and you become free and you have liberty in life and you pursue after God and the holiness of God and you pursue, uh, pursue the you pursue your life in the light of eternity you understand that you are just a sojourner in this world your ultimate life is not on the face of the earth it is just for a bracket period of time a preparation for eternity so you invest in eternity you put your love in eternity you you search your you set your mind on things above you set your mind on things what is with Christ and he himself become your delight you find your pleasures forevermore in him and his presence and I will tell you such a, a meaningful life you are able to live in the face of this earth Bible says that man is born unto trouble in this world there is much tribulation there is so much of disappointment there is so much of agony there is so much of uh, uh, setbacks in our life there is ill health there is financial problem there is so many things which weigh us down but I will tell you Bible is a book which will lift you out of circumstances it will lift you away from all the conflicts of this world right in the midst of all those things you will be able to live a life with a peace a life of joy a life of gratefulness towards God a life of deep commitment and contentment satisfaction and it is well with my soul and when God allow you to pass through different circumstances you will be able to see the providential hand of God working through and behind all those circumstances and you are dependent on him you are leaning on him you are trusting him you are talking to him you are learning from him and his word becomes the charter and you see everything through his word and your family life becomes so delightful your raising children becomes delightful your work becomes enjoyable and you do everything for God's glory and you become a shadow of Christ whatever you do you do it like how Christ did it you glorify God as Christ glorified God you pray to God as Christ prayed you deal with the people with the compassion and generosity and gentleness as Christ did and slowly by slowly your will will be lost in his will his will and his plan overtakes your fleeting temporal plans and his eternal plan for your life will thrill your hearts and I will tell you it is a, a delight to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a delight to find the hidden treasures of God's word. And I will tell you, salvation is a gift of God. It is not only a legal declaration that God accepts you as righteous based on the merits of Christ. When you are saved at that moment of your salvation, God did something supernatural in your heart. God do some supernatural work in your life as you accept Jesus Christ as you accept and acknowledge your sin before him you confess your sin and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord it is not that you are legally declared righteous before God God does a supernatural work in your life he will make you partaker of divine nature and he will give you divine longings godly longings and your total life change 
instead of living for this world and the passing pleasures of this world your eyes are open to weighty things eternal things and you will pursue god you will love the giver more than gifts you will love the blesser more than the blessings and your eyes are taken away from blessings and you start looking at the blesser and live your life unto the glory of the blesser and the giver of life and eternal life and all good things all good things come from the heaven above all good things come from the father who is in heaven so you get attached to him and you get detached from this world you are in the world but you are not of the world and you realize that and you live for god's glory may the lord give us the wisdom and let the spirit of the lord challenge you to pick up a bible and read for yourself and find the hidden treasures for your own delight and for god's glory and for your own good may the lord bless each and every one of you let us look to the lord in prayer loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for teaching us from your word we uh, instead of looking at matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 6 we were just looking at the context where it all began where before repentance what was our situation we were dead in sin we were dominated by the devil we were living in darkness and we were disobedient to god and to our parents and to our teachers and to our elderly people and we our destiny was eternal death our destiny was eternal damnation and from that situation you bestowed your grace upon us it is by grace that you are saved through faith we thank you for giving us faith we thank you for giving us grace we thank you for providing a savior in the person and work of the lord jesus christ and we magnify your name enable us to know you more enable us to follow you more enable us to to uh, 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 be more intimate to you and your word so that our life will be lived in the light of eternity in jesus christ most precious name we pray amen